and welcome to the quarterly context webinar for the third quarter of 2017. For clients of the advisor group and WellStep, uh, WellStep is the division of the advisor group that's designed for up and comer clients and 401k participants. Our quarterly context webinars are designed to provide high level perspective regarding the economy, markets, and investor behavior patterns to help with better decision making and to help both of our personal wealth and institutional clients better achieve their goals. We try to keep these meetings to about 20 minutes and we'll circulate a video link afterwards should you like to view it again or pass it on to someone that you think we can help uh, in ways similar to how we've helped you. If you have any questions, please submit them to the question box and we'll address them either during the presentation or at the end. As always, we like to remind people of the importance of focusing on uh, your goals and focusing on the elements that you can control. Uh, and in the broader context, there are elements that are short-term versus long-term and the ideal or desire and require versus acceptable. And when you're working with us, we uh, look forward to helping you uh, understand your priorities so that we can help design plans to execute accordingly. In terms of the investment markets, uh, positive across the board, again, um, uh, like it was the case last quarter uh, on a quarterly basis with only uh, negative returns in global real estate for the year and for the global uh, bond market. But overall, continued strong returns, in particular in international and emerging market stocks, where uh, a weakening dollar and strengthening foreign currencies provided a boost. As always, there are headlines along the way during any given quarter that may influence the markets up or down in the short run, but all of this fits into the long term perspective and has little impact uh, generally on the very long-term picture, but in the short run, uh, on any given day or week, uh, this type of news can cause markets to shift around and uh, in some cases make some investors nervous. Taking a look at the economic snapshot, uh, gross domestic product was revised upwards to uh, just over 3% uh, in terms of looking back at the second quarter. Uh, third quarter data was not fully available at the, in time for this presentation. Uh, however, that 3.1% is considered by many not to be sustainable uh, due to partly seasonal elements. Uh, no Fed rate changes, inflation uh, remained unchanged, unemployment essentially unchanged, but up just slightly. Uh, wage growth improved uh, a little bit, and uh, other elements here, no major changes uh, with the possible uh, notable element that oil has had a bit of a rebound recently up 20% for the quarter. Uh, and the US dollar continued to pull back a little bit relative to other major currencies. And uh, the Eurozone, which has been part of that relative strength has been uh, experiencing higher consumer confidence and uh, seems to be on a pattern a few years behind the U.S. Uh, in terms of their stimulative efforts and is now following a more uh, consistent increasing pattern, uh, again, similar to how the status of the U.S. Uh, just a couple of years ago. In terms of the longer patterns here, uh, unemployment continues to hover at its current level, but uh, in this improving trend, while wage growth has essentially stayed similar, but improved a little bit. Uh, that has implications that are both positive and negative in terms of wage growth, where uh, general wage growth can increase disposable income and spending and consumer confidence, which can then improve the overall uh, economy, but uh, wages from the corporate standpoint can hurt earnings, which can uh, affect stock prices. You can see that here in this lower chart where uh, the consumer confidence numbers uh, indicate some, some uh, continued general upward 
pattern, uh, whereas uh, relative to how that can impact uh, the price earnings ratios, uh, there's an overall pattern where these two tend to move roughly uh, in tandem. And we'll come back more on wage growth a little bit later. Price of oil, as mentioned, has been gradually working its way up from a low in early 2016, and inflation remains uh, relatively tame, uh, somewhat confusing uh, many economists uh, given that the general, albeit somewhat slow, pattern of uh, growth in the U.S. would normally be accompanied by higher levels of inflation, or at least uh, mildly higher. If we look at the long-term uh, pattern of big market crashes followed by recoveries, you can see the global financial crisis in blue here and subsequent recovery. This is total returns adjusted for inflation whereas the lower chart is not adjusted for inflation. Uh, the green line is the dot-com crash and recovery, the red line financial uh, embargo, or oil embargo and financial crisis of the 70s, and the gray line is the Great Depression. As you can see on an uh, inflation adjusted basis, the current market is far ahead of the other recoveries. And uh, if we plot the expected return as projected by Callan Associates several years back, uh, it would show that currently the current market would be a little bit ahead of that pattern. But interestingly, uh, and that's if we s reduce the peak a little bit to uh, account for what it might have been a little bit of uh, overreaching by the markets in terms of valuations and prices. Uh, but generally, you can see that despite the crash and the recovery uh, and some bumps along the way in the recovery, not too far off this long-term market projection. So things tend to revert to the mean uh, in, the, in the long run. If we look at um, cycles on a different basis, here we can see uh, since back into 1900, uh, the gray lines represent economic expansions and the blue lines represent economic contractions. And uh, interestingly, gradually over time, the expansions have lengthened much more than the contractions have and uh, recently or currently we're in a 99 month expansion and uh, there have been periods, uh, only two however, in the last uh, 100 years uh, approximately that have had longer expansions than the current one. And uh, so that uh, is a good reminder that eventually markets contract, the question uh, or economies contract and the question is how much and when. Uh, there are some signs with strong earnings, as we'll see in a moment, that would suggest that the current expansion could continue. However, it's also notable that with, uh, as, as referenced earlier, uh, wages, uh, increasing wages can put pressure on profit margins, which can uh, can affect uh, the economic status. So it's a fine balance there. Interestingly as well, uh, the debt of non-financial corporations, which includes uh, individuals and corporations, is back up near uh, pre-crash lows and pre-dot-com uh, crash <coughs> highs, rather, and uh, sometimes uh, extra leverage uh, can increase uh, economic risk, broadly speaking. However, interest rates are currently lower than they have been in pre previous periods, which makes debt servicing more uh, uh, affordable. Uh, going back to the earnings question, uh, this chart shows how uh, the uh, countries in general and sectors more uh, specifically have both had above average earning growth in recent periods. And this gives you a sense of what those patterns are uh, over time over the last 20 years or so. And in the separate chart, we can see that the Overall pattern of U.S. earnings has been quite strong. Uh, global financial crisis was a big dip, a bit of a dip here that relates in part to foreign currency uh, advancing relative to which can hurt U.S. earnings. Um, and then there are projections about uh, the coming year or so. So earnings have been relatively strong, which is part of what's supporting the uh, current prices, although there's some questions about whether or not or to what degree, rather, that uh, current valuations and, and prices are, are stretched. Which brings us to the valuation 
question. Uh, over time, we can see uh, valuations measured by price earnings ratio have uh, really spiked up in the dot com era, really um, excessively uh, relative to long term average averages, uh, but more typically tend to hover uh, in this range here. Acknowledging that this 25 year average is a bit skewed by that unusual dot com period. And right now we're above uh, what maybe an adjusted average would be, uh, but not dramatically so. Uh, so it's unclear as to uh, what, uh, what will happen next, but with relatively strong earnings, as mentioned er earlier, uh, there are, is some uh, support for, for continued uh, PE ratios at, at this level. Uh, valuations on a global basis, the U.S. tends to be a little bit heavier, uh, higher valuations relative to, uh, in this case, looking at 25-year ranges. Uh, recent quarters, we've been looking at 10-year averages. Uh, this may be a, uh, it's a different measure, certainly. Um, relative to foreign and emerging, uh, the U.S. is certainly uh, a little bit more inflated valuations. Going back to the dollar question, uh, you can see how the dollar has had it, its ups and downs and has been in a period of a 30% increase until recently and then, then more in very recent times, now cooling a little bit. Uh, oftentimes, after periods of volatility coming down, and now we're currently at uh, really a near all-time low volatility, oftentimes that's uh, followed by higher levels of volatility. but um, that, that could be triggered by any one of a number of surprise events uh, at any point in time and not necessarily on the immediate horizon. Looking again at uh, valuations and what tends to follow valuations, uh, if we look at PE ratios and uh, subsequent returns, the first chart shows returns, one-year returns, those are represented by the diamonds here. Uh, so, for example, uh, this would illustrate that after a given P-E ratio, these are the types of returns. Uh, if you line up the P-E ratios here, you can see what returns have tended to follow uh, a given P-E ratio. So the higher the P-E ratio, uh, the more in general there's a tendency to have a lower return period. However, uh, you can see there's quite a number of high returns following high P's as well, particularly on a one-year basis. If we look at a five-year basis, the data is much more in line with the orange uh, regression line, but much tighter fit, which means uh, sometimes referred to as an R-squared or explanatory power, that the higher the P-E ratios, the greater the relationship with having lower or negative returns in the subsequent five-year annualized number. So where we are right now at about 17 or 18, uh, a PE of about 17 or 18 uh, would suggest that uh, on a five-year basis, maybe a somewhat greater chance of having a subsequent five years be uh, weaker versus stronger. And if that PE goes up, then that relationship will tend to uh, uh, increase or increase the likelihood of a, a weaker five-year period. In terms of investor, investor behavior, uh, the broad pan, patterns continue, and recently uh, with money coming out of money market or cash type accounts, uh, the bulk of that appears to be going into taxable bonds and potentially world equity, although uh, this is not added because new money comes in. This is not just a zero-sum game here in these columns. Uh, but uh, with interest rates, uh, although rate increases by the Fed are being pushed out, uh, there is certainly some expectation of, of uh, rate increases in the future. And with uh, the current administration in Washington considering uh, Fed chair person other than Janet Yellen, and one economist at Stanford who has a preference for uh, a higher um, interest rate faster uh, the last several weeks has been uh, accompanied by higher bond volatility already with the expectation that that could be a potential successor to Janet Yellen. Taking a look at the quality thermometer, we have uh, 
can see for the quarter, uh, the red indicates that low quality stocks outperformed high quality stocks. And in the numbers, you can see that high quality stocks underperformed their respective uh, stocks in the value growth large small spectrum as shown here. And for the year, a bit more mixed, but generally higher quality uh, also underperformed, although uh, value and in particular mid cap value was stronger in high quality. A new chart we've added to illustrate the patterns of quality over time. You can see a periodic table here showing uh, the ranking using S&P uh, quality rankings and the within the Russell 3000 index stocks. Uh, so that covers the sort of small to large, uh, which is a capitalization weighted index, which means that there's a bit of a bias here towards larger mega cap stocks. Uh, but overall, what you can see is there's a lot of blue in the bottom half, and the blue is the higher quality stocks. It's, uh, therefore, in other words, uh, in recent years, there's been a bias towards lower quality, uh, and these elements are cyclical over time and higher quality stocks, which uh, we tend to build into uh, or sprinkle in through certain investment manager exposures within client portfolios, uh, tends to provide a bit more downside protection in difficult markets. Looking at bonds for a moment, uh, we can see, given that there's so much talk of interest rates rising and some of the current bond volatility with the expectation that the Fed chair may change, so you might like to see what the potential impact would be of a 1% rise in rates, uh, even though the, the rise may is likely to occur more gradually in smaller increments. If there were a 1% rise uh, and uh, all at the same time, uh, you can see that the segment of the market that would get hurt the most is the uh, long dated or long maturity bonds. So the bonds at 30 years could have a drop of uh, about 15% total return. And it's important to distinguish between total return and price return. The price will fluctuate more than the, uh, than the total return. So you might be hearing about price, but uh, it's not quite as bad as looking at the uh, total return uh, calculation. Now the gray bars here illustrate where clients tend to have diversified exposure and uh, in the shorter bonds, high yield, uh, the broad U.S. bond market, which includes a little bit of long bonds, but uh, uh, on a limited basis because it includes much more than that. And then uh, for clients that are taxable, also um, muni bonds. So what you can see here is much less uh, interest rate risk relative to long bonds. And uh, in some cases, the total return tends to behave differently with different types of bond asset classes and could even have an expectation of a positive return. So diversifying a bond the portion of the bond portfolio uh, can be very helpful and can uh, avoid concentrated uh, bond risk as, uh, as could, uh, could be experienced uh, if someone were uh, much less diversified. In terms of value added in the process that uh, we apply uh, for this quarter, we're highlighting the manager search process that we utilize, uh, including both Callan and our professionals. It starts with quantitative screening of investment managers, whether it's mutual funds, commingled funds, or separate accounts. Uh, then there's a qualitative uh, element, analyzing the teams, their process, and uh, retention, uh, and organizational structures. Uh, then the screening may take up to 20,000 plus uh, overall vehicles, break that down further, by asset classes and style, push it through these screens, and which then get evaluated by our manager search committees, uh, and ultimately for uh, narrowing that down to just a few managers for selection. Uh, this is a process-based approach and a disciplined approach, and has a number of uh, benefits in terms of consistency uh, over time that tends to benefit portfolios in the long run. We thought you might find it interesting that essentially we're now at a 10 year anniversary of the market peak. So this, this quarter's asset class corner uh, highlights uh, two elements. Uh, what returns are by 
in terms of stocks, in terms of uh, from small to large capitalization and value to growth, uh, going back to the previous peak. So uh, that shows numbers that are considerably lower than the returns from the market low uh, of early March in 2009. And when you look at these numbers, uh, if we take a, a rough average here of about 100%, that would be a 7.2% annualized return, which is not too far off uh, the current projected returns. So despite having the second worst market in history, things have uh, essentially reverted back to the mean. Uh, conversely, a, if we take a, a rough average of, call it 400% for this chart on the right, that would be uh, annualized return in recent years of 17 plus percent. And that is certainly not uh, uh, a reasonable expectation moving forward. We, uh, the calendar projections, uh, and we would agree, uh, are likely to have on average, uh, while we made of highs and lows, an average of something closer to 7% for stocks uh, over the next 10 years. So hopefully that's helpful in terms of managing expectations, but uh, uh, also good to see uh, that some of these difficult markets are long behind us. However, these types of high returns are also likely to be uh, behind us for a while. In terms of rules and regulations, uh, looks busy today, but um, basically that's because uh, there's an annual announcement by the IRS of the uh, retirement plan limits. So in terms of uh, retirement plan participants and how much they can contribute as well as HSAs. So I won't walk you through all these numbers, but uh, that's the update there. Uh, in terms of the fiduciary rule, uh, the DOL has uh, now planned to push out uh, to July of 2019 uh, several components of that rule. Some are now, some portion of that is now in in uh, in place, while other elements are now being pushed out further. Uh, in terms of retirement plans, more specifically, uh, Congress, as you may have heard in the news, uh, including today, is exploring pushing. Uh, tax rules of 401ks in a different direction. That's still to be determined. Uh, one of the questions is whether or not they will require all 401k type accounts uh, to be operate on a Roth or after tax basis, which would accelerate uh, uh, tax revenue to the government. Uh, some clients of ours have taken advantage of this. Those that are uh, outside uh, of the, uh, or rather in the uh, certain disaster zones, including Florida, uh, the DOL issued a hardship uh, and loan provisions that would make it easier for people to access money in a crisis situation. With that, we'd like to thank you for attending today. Um, and we always look forward to speaking with you and any questions that you have, um, contact us at any time. Uh, and. We also look forward to helping others that uh, we've been able to help like we've helped you. Thank you for your time and your attention, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.